Okay, so this is a sped up version of a tutorial I was recording with the students I'm currently working with. But what we're going to cover is render layers for uh, the VFX setup that we've got. So at the moment, I am just showing the plates that we're working with. So we have some footage that was shot the previous year and we've created some CG elements and we want to separate these foreground, mid-ground and background bits of CG to put them into comp. So we'll have to separate these layers, add the shadows, create a separate uh, shadow pass and break up the lights. So when I say render layers for VFX, we're just adding, you know, it depends what you're trying to create with your particular visual effects. If you want to rebuild everything from scratch, then you'll need to include more AOVs. But in the video you can see at the moment, I'm showing that we have the diffuse is broken out into light groups so we can separate our diffuse, um, you know, HDR, fire, spotlight. We can also do the same for the specular, um, HDR, fire and spotlight. So we have the three lights in our scene and then we've added a few AOVs. <coughs> so I've just loaded up the render settings so you can see my AOVs and I, I believe at that moment in time I'm just talking about how the master layer in everything is inherited from the master layer so whatever default settings you have in your render settings you know what AOVs you add they will automatically be added to the next render layer you have along um, so in my AOVs you can see I've got the Z depth, so that's for depth of field. Crypto mat, that's for the different shaders. And crypto object, that's for different objects. Um, the motion vector pass that was added, I was just adding in a point about if you want motion vector, which is compositing motion blur, you need to go to your Arnold renderer tab. In the motion blur settings, you need to turn on instantius shutter. I believe that's the word. Um, so for this particular VFX assignment, we are adding the AOV of diffuse and specular. So then we can add in, so the specular um, AOV is basically the highlights. So if we render both of them and then we add light groups, so we go, as you can see what I'm doing now, going into the different lights and changing the, t the area that says AOV light group. You change the name from default to something that's relevant, uh, such as spotlight, you know, HDR. I called one of them fire just because that's the purpose of it. And then once you've done that, you'll go into the active AOV tab once you've added it. And on the, f on the right hand side in the attributes, you'll see once you've got an AOV selected, there's a tab that says all light groups. So you can turn that on if you want your different lights to, to be rendered separately for that to pass. So again, the purpose for doing this is so that we can control the diffuse. Um, sorry, we, we've got the diffuse and specular so we can rebuild our, you know, beauty render, but then we've separated the lights so that we can also um, you know control them separately in the AOV tabs when you add all light groups you want to make sure that you change your driver to a normal EXR and in the common tab turn on merge AOVs where I just was in the video so the reason for changing the driver for the AOVs that you add all light groups to is because you'll get an Arnold error at the bottom because it can't um, it can't merge the AOVs and we're turning on the merge AOVs so we get a single EXR file. So in the render setup tab you click on the the new layer tab and you have to create a collection so you right click on the new layer that you've created and you create a collection so this is your group and you can see on my screen at the moment I'm selecting objects to add into that background render layer that I've just made and 
then I change the visibility to look at that render layer just so I can do a quick render and see what objects are going to be there but then you'll see when this renders the lighting will differ and the thing with that is that we need to add in shadow objects or basically objects that get in the way so everything in our master beauty render you can see we need the objects that are affecting the lighting to be in the background render layer however they need to be hidden so I believe I then create a collection called shadow objects and I add in basically the main bits of geo that are you know there for casting shadows or that are just affecting the geometry you know the grey cubes that I'm selecting were actually positioned purely for reference um, after the tracking was done so in this particular assignment we're using them to cast shadows you know something to keep in mind when you render um, when you because what we're going to do is we're going to add these objects into a shadow objects collection but they are going to um, affect the reflections as well so that's something to keep in mind because at the moment these shadow objects that we're adding you know they're useful for blocking the light but they will give off some slight reflections so you can see on my screen at the moment I'm going to just one of the objects and clicking uh, right clicking primary visibility and turning absolute override for primary visibility and when my collection was selected it applied it to that entire set of objects so I believe I'm about to do another render just to see the result but yeah the um, the objects you have will will actually affect in a you know there will be color spill is what I'm trying to say from these shadow objects so if you're lighting to a plate <clears throat> then you might want to project your footage onto your shadow objects or apply a texture from your plate or if you have textures from the shoot you know you want to apply some sort of texture to these shadowing objects so you can you know you'll get a more accurate um, light spill. If you want to turn on, uh, if you want to have override, you can do that for lights, and it might be uh, a bit easier to do it in the light editor, which is in Windows Render Editors Light Editor, and you can right-click on any area. I believe that's what I'm illustrating now you can go to any render setting so when you're viewing a render layer so you've clicked the eye you can change a setting by creating an absolute override so you right click it so you can turn the lights on or off you can increase the intensity and it, it will turn them orange and it will just affect that particular render layer so now we're creating a shadow pass so I create a new layer and for this what we'll have to do is we will have to create two collections so we will have one collection which will be the objects that are casting the shadows and then we'll need to so I've called that particular collection shadow casters and for this example I'm doing the foreground objects because these are going to be on top of my plate so we need some shadows to set them in then I've right clicked on the shadow pass layer and I'm creating another collection which is called shadow collectors so now this will be the surfaces which absorb the shadows that are cast so within this shadow collectors layer then I'm going to add in the ground plane in this example I add the wall on the left hand side um, on the shadow collectors um, collection you can see that I added a material override so you right click on a collection and 
um, you, there's an option for create material override and then I added in the Arnold menu a AI shadow what's it called shadow mat so that's a shader an Arnold shader and you'll see an example of it now the only other thing I did was add similarly to what I did in the um, background render layer I added in primary visibility um, layer override for the shadow casters group and that was just to turn the foreground objects off so you could see in the render that was on screen all the shadow areas were white and everything else was black so it creates this matte effect but the the geometry that I was using to collect the shadows was pretty rubbish for that wall yeah, it's very low poly, weird geometry. It'd be better just to have um, flat planes. So you could even separate these into, you know, just ground shadows. It depends what you're looking for, really. So for for the people actually doing this project, I I would advise them to swap out that reference wall if they're using the same thing. The AI Shadow Mat shader also has its own bespoke AOVs, so extra render passes, which you can use. And on the screen, I was just illustrating where they are. They are in the AOV browser, and you can also see them within the shader on the right hand side. However, after testing them, I would say that the shadow mask is pretty much the same as the shadow the standard shadow render that we made. I should note that the shadow pass you can only see in the alpha, so it's black and white. Um, so you could just shuffle that out when you're in Nuke or After Effects, whatever you're using. So this next render layer we're making is an ID. It's a very old school ID method. Uh, so we created new empty layer and we create a collection. So this first collection's just going to be an ID for just one single object. So I right clicked on the ID and created a material override and added a surface shader. Then in the out color of the surface shader, I selected a pure red. So in the color palette area, you get pure red. So now I would have that particular object, which was the, um, I don't know what the first object was. I think it was the back wall. So now that would be separated with a separate material. And then I've created a new collection with a new material override and now with a blue color. And as I changed to that ID render layer, you can see we could, uh, because it's using the legacy surface shader, you can see it in the viewport. And you can see in the render how I now have these two areas separated. So when you take that ID into Nuke, as you view it, you can press red um, RGB on your keyboard. So you have RGBA. So when you create an ID pass, not only will you be able to see an alpha of all the objects, but you'll be able to separate you know, each of the objects based on color. So from that render setup, you know, with um, these are the renders that I got from pretty much doing the same thing. So in the, on the screen, I'm just talking about, I turned on in the render settings in the common tab, merge AOVs. So on the far left hand side in that blue backdrop, I've got my beauty render and then I've got some of my AOVs. And then in this diffuse passes light separated tab, these are what came out in my uh, diffuse renders folder for that background layer I created and I'm using a layer contact sheet to view them. But you can see I've got diffuse HDR and diffuse fire and then the diffuse, just everything on its own. As I said before, these have been rendered separately to control the lights, but when we merge over the specular onto a diffuse, that creates the final result. But after turning on all light groups, we now have these um, it gave us uh, 
these separate diffuse and specular renders and as I move over to this side of the comp I'm just explaining how to how I've connected up these diffuse and specular renders so I can I can create the beauty because that's all we're trying to do and I've added in some exposure nodes so it means I can control each separate light for the entire scene in a really simple way so on the left hand side I've got my my specular specular passes on the right hand side I've got the diffuse passes so these are um, inside those renders I have to use a shuffle node to separate the lights so what you can see here is I've shuffled out from the specular passes I'm shuffling out the fire so you create a shuffle node and then there's a drop down within the shuffle node and you can just pick there'll be it'll, it'll read the file and then you should get your specular uh, underscore whatever you know in this instance it was specular underscore fire and then you do the same for the diffuse and then you merge them together just a bog standard merge and then after I merged them together then I added an exposure so because we've separated the lights the diffuse and specular we merge them and then we add an exposure and now these exposures are from each separate light in the scene because they've, they've all been shuffled out and we can control the lights of our scene with these exposures so if we take 24 hours to render then we can load in the renders and then we can quickly set up this this simple method and then we can control our lights much like we could in Maya um, one thing to keep note of is um, oh yeah I was just uh, illustrating that you know once you've set up that top bit so that top bit of that comp was my background layer and then the next area that was a copy and paste that was a mid layer and then the next bit was the foreground CG so the exposure nodes I will mention you need to change adjust in to be stops so we're adjusting in exposure stops but that's it it's quite simple it's quite quick hope that helps